Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna do a quick overview of the grass generator. Uh, I just released version 1.5 so I thought it'd be good to do a video about some of the stuff that's in it. Uh, I'm not gonna go too in-depth because I think most of the things are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, if you have questions about it you can always ask me on my blog or email me. Uh, you can find my details on the blog as well www.themantissa.net um, and like I said, yeah, any questions, just feel free to ask. So, after installing the script, uh, also the install instructions, which you can find on the website, so just check there. When you open it up, you'll see that the interface has changed a little bit if you've used version 1.0. The grass patch scatter settings aren't visible anymore. Uh, the reason for this is we now have a new way of scattering, which I'll get into a little later. Uh, for the grass blade settings themselves, not much has changed, just uh, you're able to define the amount of segments in your grass blades, which some people were asking for. Also, the spinners for length, width, and bend, uh, actually no, just the spinners for length and width, sorry. They go down a lot lower to really small settings and up higher as well, because some people were telling me that if they're using different units, uh, they were running into trouble not having the grass scale correctly and stuff like that or not really being able to make it in the correct scale I should say. So I changed that up a little bit so you've got more freedom to do with what you want with it. Now I'm just going to close it again and open it up for the default settings. Um, as long as none is selected in patch type if we click generate we'll see that we just have the blades themselves generate um, which can be handy for a few things if you want to create your own custom patches in your own way then that's why it's in there so you can go nuts with that and also see if I do change the blade segments let's say I up these to 20 instead of setting them to auto if you generate them now if I select them you'll see you'll have a lot more segments to work with so if you're going closer to your grass you can have a little more control um, so yeah that's that Seeing that just generating a bunch of blades isn't that interesting, uh, I wanted to get into the way you can generate a patch. And, and we'll go over the old version first for some of the people that haven't used it, and then we'll look at the new version, what that can do as well. So this basically had a kind of simple interface. You'll notice in the other version it hasn't changed all that much. But um, it's just to generate it really quickly. Uh, you can define a radius, how big your patch has to be, uh, you can say how dense it has to be. There's only three settings here. The reason I did it in the first version like this is, well, to be honest, I wasn't that good at scripting it yet. So it was basic. I didn't allow too many options because I didn't want there to be too many bugs and stuff. So if you just click generate now, you'll see the grass generates. The radius is about approximately 25. Uh, centimeters in my file or 25 units depending on how you work and you'll see if this is like 10 20 25 it's thereabouts so we can keep generating them as much as we want we'll get a random result every single time but I'll get into the controls a little bit now so when we look at these uh, first of first off the radius if we set this to 50 we generate you'll see the radius is a lot larger. Um, the algorithm has been optimized a little bit to kind of um, keep track of what radius you're using and uh, generate as many blades as necessary accordingly. But I think with like really large values, there might be some weirdness. So we're talking about grass here. It's not that big anyway. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail too much on that. Then for all the random rotation, basically what this means is if I set these to zero, and I'll set the scale to zero for now as well. I uh, have a smaller radius so we can see what we're doing. If I click generate now, you'll see that the grass basically gets generated in one direction. Uh, the patch itself is just facing one direction. This might actually be quite nice for something like a scene where there's obviously some wind. You might want to angle your grass uh, a certain way. Um, always a little variation can be nice. So if we set this to say 45, you'll see there's a bit of variation there. So you can still get like a varied look, uh, yet windy as well. Um, I'd say most of these are kind of self-explanatory. I'll reset them to zero and show you if I set the X to 90, sorry, it only goes up to 90. If we generate the new patch, you'll see that we'll get 
kind of funny results. But I wanted to include control for the three axes because you never know what people want to do with it. So that's why that's in there. Um, let's set these back to the default values. And 360. So your Z parameter there, the, uh, the amount of Z rotation, is probably the most interesting one. Um, because if you press generate, all your blades will be kind of uh, turned randomly in a horizontal fashion, which is nice. Okay, um, something I forgot to mention as well was the cut grass option. Let's say you want really short grass, uh, but you want it to have like if a cut kind of a cut look. I'll make this a little smaller as well. If we generate it now, you'll see that we have grass blades which have been cut off at a certain point, which, you know, kind of generates uh, like a, a mode lawn or whatever, something like that. So I just want to quickly show that. I'm going to set these to auto again and um, just quickly go over the last three options. So we have the random scale. Again, we can kind of go nuts on one scale and let the other ones kind of leave. So you'll see what happens. The blades themselves are scaled in the uh, the x-axis, which means some of them will be thicker than others. Uh, and that's another way of adding randomness whenever you're creating a patch. So I'm just going to close it and open it up real quick so we have the default settings again. Um, the last two parameters here are kind of nice. They're basically uh, to assign, like it says, random material IDs to the grass blades. So if I'm going to press generate now, it'll generate a patch. Uh, if I go in there, I can quickly convert it to an editable poly. And if I start selecting polygons now, I can select them by ID. If I select ID 1, you'll see about a third of them are selected. Select ID 2, the other third, and select ID 3. And that way you can, you know, kind of get some more variation going with the textures, and textures and stuff. Now, this goes up to 100. So you can go really nuts with it. Uh, if you have 100 separate grass textures and you want to use them, well, go for it. But uh, it'll probably take quite a quite a lot of time. <laughs> so uh, the last option is kind of derived from the materials uh, from the material IDs, and that's to create a multi sub material automatically. Now, this multi sub material is uh, just standard materials, so you can start swapping out whatever ones you need uh, depending on what render engine you use. There isn't any support yet uh, to actually generate the standard material of the current used renderer. I might look at, into that in the future, but we'll see. Uh, this is all just a, well, it's kind of a side project. I'm having fun with it and I can't always work at it as much as I'd like to, but at least this way, you know, you've got some flexibility. You don't have to do everything yourself. So that's that for the old version. Um, as you'll see, like it says, it's version 1.0 scattering. Um, the new version is shape. And when I switch, you'll see some of the controls kind of remain the same. Um, it's pretty logical. Same with the like material IDs and submaterial. I'm not going to go over them again because they still do the same thing. The only thing that's really changed is we're actually able to scatter on a mesh now. So there was something people were asking me about, uh, and I definitely want to get into it because it is an interesting feature, and uh, we'll have a quick look at how that works. So I'm going to have a just a basic plane, nothing too crazy. Uh, and from here, I can select the plane. And instead of having the density amount uh, with like arbitrary values uh, hidden behind the sparse, medium, and dense options, you're actually able to control the amount of blades you're scattering on your mesh. So I'm going to leave it at 1,000. It goes up to 100,000. Now, OK, if, if you set it to 100,000, it's going to be pretty slow. Like, I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> it might take a while because it's scattering all the, all, the, uh, all the blades and collapsing them into one mesh. Uh, internally, I'm using particle flow because it was the easiest to control. Um, so, yeah, it, it comes with some limitations, but at least this way I can ensure that um, it'll work on most Max versions without any extra plugins or, or weird stuff you have to do to get it working. So 
with that said, with our plane selected, and um, just leaving that this at a thousand, we'll generate the grass, and you'll see uh, the automatic create material IDs was still on, so that's why we're seeing three colors. But we're actually scattering on the plane. So this means uh, you're not really stuck with the one option anymore. I'm just going to quickly delete the grass here and show you why this is a little more powerful. Let's say I'm going to set this to 50 segments. 50 segments. Makes it a little bigger. Uh, maybe put like a noise modifier on it just to give it some extra little bit. So we've got like a, a wavy terrain, well, terrain patch, because this is kind of small anyway. Um, you don't have to collapse it. Because it's using particle flow internally, you can use uh, just pretty much any kind of object, even with modifiers on it, so that's nice. So we can turn this off and maybe up this to 10,000. You'll see it's not blazingly fast, but it works. So, you know, uh, if I ever get time to maybe improve that, I'll definitely look into it. But for now, I want to release it as is, because I feel this is a feature a lot of people are going to use. So when I press generate, you'll see it takes a little while. But then we have a complete mesh, which follows the direction of the terrain under it. Now, all the um, grass blades are facing upwards. Um, the random rotation is applied. But for now, there's no option to let the grass follow the normals yet, because this is mainly used, well, for me, I'm mainly using it for terrain, um, which means I'm not really getting a lot of weird shapes and stuff. Uh, I can show you what happens when you use it on a teapot, for example. Maybe turn this down again so it doesn't take as long. Um, you'll see, if I make the teapot transparent, uh, you'll see that all the blades are facing up, so they're not following the normals. Like I said, might implement this in the future. We'll see what happens. Uh, there's still other stuff I really want to implement, but for now, it works and it looks okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, one more interesting feature, actually, which I wanted to show before I ended the video, is that you're now also, with the new uh, shape scattering option, you're actually able to use a density map for the grass. So this way you can create kind of weird shapes or whatever. I'll show you exactly what it is. Um, it works quite well, again, because I implemented it through particle flow. Options like this are quite easy to implement. So if anybody has any requests, I'm always open to suggestions and I'll try and get it in there as soon as possible. For now, oh no, not a noise. Let's make a gradient ramp. Set it to radial. Swap these colors out. Maybe make this one black. I'm just making a basic shape uh, to demonstrate the grayscale map on. Throw this in the diffuse color. Now for this to work, you do have to have a material applied. Um, so I apply this and show it in our viewport. You'll see, so let me turn this off for a second. There we go. You'll see that we now have the same plane. I'm going to select it here again. Same plane that was in the uh, previous, well, in the same scene, basically. Um, so we have the map applied to it. And if I now check grass density from grayscale values, if we generate it again, you'll see it'll actually take those into account and scatter the grass accordingly. So if we hide this now, you can see that you get kind of a, a funky little patch. Uh, so this gives you more options for weird kind of shapes. Uh, I think well, the reason why I released version 1.5 instead of waiting for, uh, let's say, version 2.0 with even more features is because I think this is something people can really use. Uh, the randomness is always something you need to kind of, yeah, try and master and, and see what you can do with it to get nicer results. So that's why I wanted to add this in. Um, for now, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to updates. Um, let's see. And hide the plane again. Um, like I said earlier, the cut grass option 
it's being done at a blade level so if we use this again you can see we get cut the cut grass so everything's still all working together um, then some of the stuff people were asking about like presets and oh, I forget what it was um, a few more things I am working on but like I said it's a side project so it might take a while um, I am releasing the script though with a second script called uh, pflow to proxy which basically will allow you to scatter proxies or objects um, with a particle flow system. Now I'm going to do this in a different video. It'll probably be on the same blog page anyway. So definitely check that out as well. And uh, for now, well, I'd like to say thanks in showing interest in the grass generator. I got some really, really great comments from people. Uh, I don't know, it makes it fun to keep going at it anyway. So with this, well, we'll see you later and uh, I hope you guys have fun with it.